Well, um, this car is something that my grandfather uh, intended back in 1976. Well, in 75, really, when he made the first car, um, he told me he always wanted to make one for himself. But that story happened at the museum, uh, the Whitney Museum in New York, uh, when the car was there at the Whitney Museum at his great retrospective. And I, it was the first time I saw the car. So I was a, I was a kid, and imagine a, a kid that sees his grandfather's race car for the first time. It was super thrilling. And the whole exhibition, I mean, the Marcel Breuer building in New York, that beautiful building filled with Calder, but then this car was there. And um, because the car was in Europe and I was in New York, I didn't even know about the project because my grandfather did hundreds of projects all over the world. And um, I just happened upon a car painted by my grandfather at the Whitney Museum, and it was all so overwhelming, really. And I said to my grandfather, let's start the car, let's hear the engine roar. And um, he thought that was very funny. It was inside, of course, so he thought that was very funny that I wanted to start it and hear the sound, because um, the sound is amazing. And so he told me then that he, he wanted to make one. He wanted to make his own uh, artist proof of the car and just to have it. I don't know, like, was he thinking he would drive it around? I have no idea. But um, unfortunately, he passed away just two weeks after that. And now we have the chance with BMW, with their, you know, uh, incredible support and close collaboration, working together um, to do that. I'm not really a car person, so I'm a sculpture person. So it's a rolling sculpture, it's a public sculpture. It's something that should exist driving. To see it drive is different than to see it static. And um, to hear the car is something for art people, is something really weird. And it gives us a new aspect, a new sort of view of what Calder's intention was, like how art can be social sculpture instead of it being sequestered in a museum, how it can be out in the public is a, such a different aspect and it's a key aspect of Calder. So that's really the intention here was to make something belonging to the Calder Foundation to be able to represent this idea of social sculpture in yet another way of Calder's uh, production and his, and his intention. Um, so I was hoping that we could execute the artist proof with great attention and authority, but also tremendous originality. I had no idea that BMW would be able to craft something with, I mean, I'm, I'm shocked. You put the cars together, there's no way to tell which one's which. Honestly, it's just incredible, totally incredible. And even, you know, it, it begins with a vintage car. People don't really understand. They think we built it from zero, but no, we began with an original vintage car, just like the race car. A 1974 CSL pulled off the production line, was made into the original called a race car. And so we used a 1974 CSL to produce the car. So the original project came out of a different project so the, the project began with um, an airline company asking my grandfather to paint an airplane. And today that sounds normal, but in, um, in 1972, the, the plane was painted in 1973. So it was really a two year process to get this airplane painted. No one had ever painted an airplane, a helicopter, an automobile, nothing had happened like that, of any kind of thing like that before. BMW and Hervé Poulain had this idea, if that was quite successful, why not have Calder paint a car and paint the beautiful CSL? Because it's an extraordinarily beautiful car, the lines are amazing. Besides that it's very effective as a race car, uh, which they, you know, they were learning how amazing the car was and tweaking it, changing the body style, this car was a race car before it became the Calder car. It raced at least three times or more. And the body shape was a little different. It was the black scheme and the vent in the back was different. So in 75, 
They took that car and they changed the body a little bit. They modified it and then Calder painted it and then it raced at Le Mans. Um, yeah. Well, the, the team that built this car is an extraordinary team of people. Um, they went to every effort. Uh, if, if you, the, the car will never be next to the other car ever again, probably. We only had them together once in their lives as finished cars. And um, we had a chance to examine them and totally extraordinary. If you look inside the car, you'll see that up on the roll bar is a sensor. The sensor comes from um, airspace um, sensors technology, uh, but it's an old vintage sensor. So they had to find that original sensor. It's the real sensor. It's not a, a, it's not a digital reproduction. It's not a 3D print. It's the actual sensor, the same sensor. So to find every piece, every part, every nut and bolt, as you say, even the sw every switch is identical switch. The numbering and lettering um, next to the switches by hand is done exactly precisely the same way. Um, the goal was to produce a car that was, um, you know, as if they were in production at the same moment together, that everything would be the, identically the same. Um, they did a totally surprising, shocking, success, shockingly successful job. Totally, as you know, amazing. Having Walter Maurer paint this car was a desperately key ingredient. It couldn't have been done by anyone else. We had to have him. We're very, very lucky that he's still available to paint a car. Um, when I asked him to paint the car, he's like, sure, no problem. And, and uh, you know, I was hoping it would go very well. I had no idea it would be 100 points perfect. Um, that was an incredible, incredible pleasure. Even Walter Maurer's signature on the back of the car, which is on both cars, of course, is quite the same. He has the same signature. So beautiful. All hand done. Gorgeous. I cannot say I'm happy. I can only say I'm ecstatic. It's a very different, very different feeling. Totally ecstatic. It's so much better than I expect. I expected it to be great, but I just, the level of perfection is completely mind-blowing. That, that, it's still, like, as I'm still examining the car and starting the engine, hearing the sound, I get to drive it a little bit, it's really amazing. It's really amazing, super amazing. Really what it's for is to be in museums and exhibitions related to art so BMW's car will be sometimes related to art, but often related to cars. And our car will be mostly related to art and sometimes related to cars. And so having one in Europe and one in North America, having these two cars both representing this intention is, um, you know, it's amazing. It's totally amazing. In fact, we have many, many requests for the car to be in museum shows already. We just announced it, what, two weeks ago or something like that, and, and already people are super excited about it. As with every work of art by Calder, we have to protect it, we have to preserve it, but we also have to present it the way the artist intended. It's a big challenge of conservation, but also artistic integrity. And this is something we navigate all the time. The car is no different. How do we present the car in a way that proves its intention from 1975, but yet protects it? So in some cases, it'll be in a museum and we won't start it. Or in some cases, we'll bring it to the museum and have a public kind of unveiling and start the car so people can hear it, have a special event, and then put it inside the museum for three months as a display. And then, you know, every, every occasion I think is gonna be different.